Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. We're going to do the end of year perfume selection. These, for me, have been the top 10 perfumes of 2023. Basically, the perfumes I've used the most, the perfumes I've discovered for myself, I don't want to say the most, but just, I don't know, the perfumes that have spoken to me in 2023, more than any other perfume, or perfumes that have been a total discovery, like we're kind of waiting somewhere, you know, in the side panels of the theater, and then all of a sudden they, before you you knew it, they kind of entered center stage and took over and became the stars of the show. Some twists and turns and surprises, definitely, because when I started compiling my list and looking back at all the top, you know, five and ten uh, lists that I've done throughout the year, and then also checking on which perfumes I used the most, I was also kind of really surprised at what uh, came out. So, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Push uh, the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today. Get access to extra perks, such as incredible fun perfume bottle emojis. You can also follow me on Patreon, Super Jacob, all spelled together there as well for extra perks. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week on my main Super Jacob channel, so go check me out there and join the live chats. Let's get to the first perfume. So, this has been a shocker for me. Well, has it though? Yeah, it has. Let's start with the shocker. Let's start with the bang. This is, you know, never made it to top uh, end of the year of any of my selections, really. But this time, times have changed. This perfume enters my top 10 for 2023 list as a final, finally understanding this perfume type of moment. Like this perfume is on this list because I understood it. Or its current formulation rather really works well with me or for me. So yeah, it would be beige eau de parfum, believe it or not. Uh, <laughs> I loathed this perfume for the longest time. By the way, Thumb up this video if you're enjoying it and subscribe. It's the Hawthorne and the Honey Combo. It, it just, it always smelled to me like hair salon. Expensive hair salon, but never really sophisticated. And I don't really like smelling this on other people. It's a very bizarre perfume. But somehow, I've grown to understand Hawthorne more. Uh, it's, it's a fragrance that I really did not... Like Hawthorne and perfumes is something just I didn't like for the longest time. Now, it just clicked. I'm like, yeah, okay. I, I can do Hawthorne all of a sudden. Uh, love honey in general. I was actually surprised that I did not like beige because I do love honey and perfumes. A lot of people don't like honey and perfumes because honey can smell very easily dirty in, in a kind of ratchet way. I like my dirty. <laughs> and I was never a fan of beige eau de toilette. Uh, the first version of the Eau de Parfum that came out in 2016, in my opinion, is terrible, still to this day. Uh, Olivier Polge butchered this perfume, in my opinion. And then everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged. And just my opinion. But uh, now, uh, as I've noticed also with Sycamore and with Cuir de Russie lately, the current Eau de Parfums are formulated to smell closer to their eau de toilette counterparts again, which is really great. And kind of this is bizarre because, like I said, I'm not a fan of eau de toilette of beige, but uh, this is a weird in-between. It's not as extreme as the eau de parfum was in 2016, and it's it doesn't smell like the eau de toilette, but it's more tame. They've done something to it, and now it works. So this is the perfume that made it on the list as the one that surprised me. I surprised myself, right? And in fact, this is the last missing link of all the Les Exclusives that are currently available from Chanel uh, that I haven't reviewed yet. So we're still waiting for the review of Beige. The review is coming. So this was kind of, let's start it, you know, right off the bat with a banger. Like, oh my God, who would have thought that this would ever enter a list like this? Uh, the next one... Uh, 
just this summer, really, I spent a lot of time surrounded by Yasminum grandiflorum. I had jasmine flowers blooming in summer all around me, and it was intoxicating, especially at night. And it made me appreciate this perfume even more. And uh, definitely on my list, it's Joy by Jean Patou. It is a jasmine bomb, very indolic. Uh, and uh, this is one of their re-edition vintage 30s bottles. They've kind of, before the perfume was discontinued by LVMH. Thank you, LVMH, for messing up yet another masterpiece. Uh, so poopy, so elegantly barnacle chic. Joy always gives me barnacle chic in the best of ways. That is the indolic jasmine in here. It is masterful. I love this perfume so much. It's a heavy, heavy jasmine. Uh, it will go very indolic on some skins, mostly on male skin and male hormones. It will smell poopy and pissy. On feminine clear skin, it will go more floral, less poopy. So, oh, but I, I just adore it. it. It tells me a story of history, but also future. Uh, it's heavy, but it's also enlightening and enchanting. And I was just so thrilled when I found at a discounter this uh, re-edition of the vintage bottle after uh, Joy was discontinued. I found uh, this in, at a discount store, so of course I grabbed it up, and I'm just so sad that Joy is no longer in production. But because of my particular summer experience with the jasmine flowers blooming and being so beautifully succulent in the middle of the night in particular, having that smell intoxicatingly in the heat of the night all around me, just made me love this perfume this year even more. So, of course, Joy by Jean Patou made it to my top 10 perfumes of 2023. The next one, interesting because, well, they're all interesting, really, but this next one is a white floral perfume that uh, falls in the cheapy range, but uh, just because it falls in the cheapy area doesn't mean it's any less good. This is a masterpiece. And I love my white florals. This one is a powdery, clean, crisp, crystalline, white shirt type of perfume, just like the shirt I'm wearing now. By the way, this shirt is uh, from my mom from the 80s, and uh, it's still, look at that, once upon a time, quality was amazing. It's been washed billions of times, and uh, it fits me. So my mom loved to wear oversized stuff in the 80s, right? So it kind of, now it's a little bit tight on me, but I love it to bits, and it's kind of that old school white shirt vibes, and nothing better to wear with this then, well, Eternity would be great, but Eternity didn't make the list, but Eternity is great with this shirt. If you know, you know. But there's another 80s perfume that is a masterpiece and it goes very well with the 80s shirt, and that would be Liz Claiborne. Liz Claiborne's uh, homonymous uh, perfume, Liz Claiborne. I am, I don't know, third bottle already. <laughs> it's just I keep buying this. Oh, this is such... Uh, an oak moss genius fragrance. I've reviewed this on my channel. Go check out my review. This is kind of like an 80s version of Mitsuko by Guerlain. Uh, a powdery, irisy, soft, crisp, white, cotton linen silk shirt in the breeze, in the summer breeze. It's just wonderful, masterful. And like I said, you you know, you can find it for really, really, really reasonable price today. This year, I, every year, really, I mean, Liz Claiborne is such a staple in my perfume wardrobe. Like, you have to adore Liz Claiborne. And it's also available in those plastic outer shell bottles. And so this is 100 mil, but uh, the smaller bottles are available in the red, blue, and uh, what was it? Red, blue, yellow. Yeah, red, blue, yellow, and I think maybe even green variations of the little bottle super cute very collectible i i just 
Liz Claiborne by Liz Claiborne. This is the Eau de Toilette. I do think it's the Eau de Toilette. Let me double check. Yeah, it's the Eau de Toilette. Oh. <laughs> oh, man, this is just, oh. it makes me stop, you know, like, I'm like, oh, well, the camera's rolling. I have to film. I'm like, no, 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 hold on. Stop everything. Let me just. Yeah, it, it, it's perfumes like these that make me happy to be alive. Um, it does have a little issue with this little metal thing that <laughs> kind of is the ring around the sprayer. It kind of tends to go off. I, I need to glue that on again. No, now it stays. But uh, it, it's just magical. It's almost like an iris, orris root, oak moss, powdery, rose, tuberose accord. Very, very, very beautiful. Uh, if you can get the version that's made in the US, because uh, the US version does not have to really abide by the IFRA EU regulations. So the oak moss is quite substantial if you can get it in the American version of Liz Claiborne. So there's that. Now, the next one. Very interesting because this one, uh, it's a sad perfume um makes me really go deep into a, a poetic contemplative state of mind of of the world and existence and when you like start pondering on how short our lives are the brevity of life and and how quickly it's all over and and you start thinking why even struggle why even you know fight for what, you know, work, build a home, pay taxes, uh, trouble at work, problem with colleagues, uh, you know, the stupid petty things in life. Life is so short, you know, and kind of before you know it, it's over. And that type of feeling of acknowledging that everything is so finite and quickly over and when you're just about to kind of give up and say, well, it's all for nothing anyway, so might as well just, you know, call it a day. Then this perfume kicks in telling you, yeah, it is all very futile, if you may, volatile, very, limited, but there's so much beauty in, in, in that short breath of life that we are given. There's something so beautiful and poetic in, in the brevity of our existence. And the perfume that explains this through smell better than any other that I've ever smelled in my life is, is this one. And I have been contemplating how limited life is this year a lot. And so this perfume really kept kind of nailing it, nailing the mood and hitting the spot for me. So that would be Maura by Guerlain, or Mahora. But I think the French do not pronounce the H. So it's Maura by Guerlain. And uh, there is spelled out the name in the back, M-A-H-O-R-A, -A, released in the year 2000, discontinued literally a year or two later, did not sell well. It was way ahead of its time. It is an kind of like a, Almond mixed with a Gerlinat vanilla tuberose, a milky, almondy tuberose. Oh, this one, really deep, you know, the advertising, the advertisement. Came. I still have not reviewed this one because it, it, it's just, it brings you to tears and uh, I've been kind of postponing the review. It's hard for me because I know that reviewing this one will take the life out of me. So I'm kind of bracing myself and pacing myself, preparing myself mentally to do the review of this one because I want to do it justice. But if you do this one justice, like it leaves you sucked dry. 
I'm going to need a couple of days to recuperate after I, re I review this perfume. So, but the ad campaigns were in the desert where there's no life. And then in the middle of the desert, this kind of plant starts growing out of nowhere. That's the perfume. And in fact, this particular sprayer that does turn around to activate it. And then that's the nozzle that works when you flip it. This is the pod, the seed. And this, this is the root. The perfume grows like the seed opens up and then it sheds its root. So it's kind of this contrast paradox of, well, underneath the surface of the desert, the roots start growing. That would be the perfume. But the perfume is something ethereal that actually goes up into the sky. So how come this thing is going downwards into the earth? So the perfume, this magical root is underneath the ground, but the, the, it's a perfume though, so it should be above the ground in the sky, but it's not. It's buried, hidden inside the ground. And only when you spray it, does the root get pumped into the surface, above the surface of the ground, into the sky, and you give it life. So this is a representation of death when there is no life, there's no water in this desert, there's nothing there. It's still, this perfume, you can't smell it. It doesn't have a smell because, well, the seed is above the ground. The fragrance is underneath the ground. So this is all you see. And then it's up to you to flip it, spray it, and give it life. And it kind of, it's so poetic. It's like a portrayal of death, but then you can give it life because you're the one who twists it, activates it sprays it out into the world and gives it to the world, right? Uh, so against all odds, life continues through this fragrance, even though the fragrance is a depiction of the end of life. Mind-blowing. Um, that's been the theme, 2023, really. It's been very much contemplation of limitation of life, of time, kind of embracing more and more how finite it is. Life, you know, the universe is maybe forever, but what is forever? The second you say forever, it's limited. Human beings are not infinite. So technically, we cannot grasp the concept of infinity. The second you define infinity, you defined it. Once you have defined it, you have limited it. But infinity is not limited. It should be illimited. So we cannot grasp, in reality, the true concept of infinity. But maybe, perchance, just a little bit, this little baby gives us a hint at what it could be but it doesn't explain all the truth. It just gives us a hint. Masterful poetry in this perfume. And of course, if we're talking about the end of life, I think one of the most um, symbolic perfumes for me in 2023 have been connected to a very special person in my life. And uh, coincidentally, a person who passed away at the end of 2022. Um, 2022 was the year in which uh, Patrick J. Thomas and I released the movie Art Lovers Unite with Vivian Westwood. Vivian passed away on the 29th of December of 2022. Her passing has marked the beginning of a big journey for both Patrick and I. We both made the movie together with Vivian Westwood. Uh, we spent 2023 traveling a lot, showing the movie worldwide. And of course, this perfume was with me. Every step of the way, Vivian Westwood's boudoir was with me every step of the way. It had to be in my top 10 perfumes for 2023 because so symbolic, you know, our movie slowly making it into cinemas worldwide and Vivian wore boudoir, her own perfume. She wore it. And I know because I smelled it on her. I didn't have to read it in a book. Like, did you know that Vivian wore this? No, I smelled it on her when we worked together and I talked to her about her perfume. 
very magical, very special for me. So, of course, I travel with boudoir and uh, I always have it with me. I always have a bottle with me, no matter where I go. Such a symbolic, beautiful tobacco, rose, marigold, dirty, earthy marigold, <coughs> dirty honey, post-coital accord. Again, <coughs> pardon me, the, the end of life because she passed away, but then this gives life as well because it's a sexual perfume. It's like creation of life in boudoir. Just magical. And of course, it had to be on the list. Another perfume that is very significant to me in 2023, and it has definitely marked the entire year, it's almost been like a telenovela. Before I show you the perfume, and since we're talking about telenovela, which in English means soap opera. If we're talking about telenovela, if we're talking about soap opera, if we're talking about melo, the melodrama, it's a particular genre that very, very well, I've noticed this year, fits with this perfume selection. The perfumes that I've loved the most in 2023 are connected to melo or melodrama. And so I would just like, if you will permit me to recommend a soundtrack, a musical soundtrack to go along with you sniffing all these perfumes. This is the only record I purchased this year. It was released this year and I love it two bits and I listen to it all the time. And it is very, it has also marked my emotional state of mind, poetic state of mind this year together with these perfumes. And that has been this fr uh, fragrance here. I call it fragrance. It's Mina's latest album called Ti Amo Come Un Pazzo, which means I love you like a crazy person. So it's all about melodrama and it is very, very emotional and very subdued. And Mina is in her 80s. Her voice is getting, it's aging so beautifully like a fine wine. But I find myself often just listening to this album while I'm sniffing on all of these perfumes and the combination just adds that extra layer of uh, perfection, really. So this is the tracks, uh, the, the record, all of the uh, titles from the album. Uh, Come la Luna and Don Salvato are one of uh, the two best pieces from this album. And this is Mina with some random dude who's kind of blending into her, this melodrama between them, very soap opera kind of. All right, so that, just get that record if you want to feel the depth of these perfumes. Now, like I was saying, melodrama, soap opera, which fragrance has given us the most dramatic moments as I take a sippy this year? <clears throat> it had to be. Cristal by Chanel. I do have a couple of drops in this older bottle. In all its iterations, the Eau de Toilette, the Eau de Parfum, the Eau Verte. <clears throat> this has been our big dramatic moment of the year. Will it get discontinued? Will it not be discontinued? Stock was depleted everywhere. You couldn't find it anywhere. No shop had it anymore. The perfumeries didn't have it anymore. Sales associates telling you, yeah, it's gone. It's not going to come back anymore. And then all of a sudden, rumors from afar started drifting towards us, telling us it's being rebottled, but not reformulated. Is it going to come out again? We don't know when. And then, poof, October, November of 2023. Chanel re-releases Cristal in new bottles, new packaging. I start sniffing them. I buy the new bottle and I realize that it has been reformulated. It's, it's become softer, more tame, fuzzier, warmer, more like a body mist rather than actual he hefty perfume that it used to be. But I still love it. I'm always going to love my Cristal. Cristal is always going to be a masterpiece that I'm going to adore in all its iterations, but of course, 2023 was the year of Chanel Cristal. You know, that was the big, even though silent launch, you know, Chanel rebottled their perfumes, repriced their perfumes. 
very hush-hush, no advertisement campaign. They were missing for almost a year in many stores, and then poop, they just reappeared. And just like that, like in a soap opera, when you thought that one of the main characters was gone for good, got lost in the jungle 10 years ago, and then they reappear like, <gasps> ta -ta -ta, I am back. <laughs> you know, that's exactly what Cristal delivered to us, the melodrama. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's kind of the end of an era as well, because the new formulation of it is um, a little bit lackluster. But it's still better than a ton of other perfumes out there, and I'll still keep buying it, even though, to my nose only, it smells more watered down in its current formulation. But it's definitely, I've made so many videos on Cristal as this juggernaut of a situation. Will it be discontinued or not? Continued evolving and unraveling like a ball of yarn, as Bjork would say. Uh, I kept, you know, posting videos that were updating the situation. So Cristal, I think, had the most videos done by me <laughs> on my channel, on my perfume channel this year. So definitely warrants being in the top 10. The next one is... Uh, a, um, a, a relaunch, a, a reformulation relaunch that happened very, very early on in the year, very early on in 2023. And uh, that would be Dior. As Francis Kurjan became artistic director for the perfume um, side of the, of the Dior company, LVMH, he, of course, reintroduced his baby, from the early 2000s, from the Collection Privé range. En Noir, he also reintroduced Cologne Blanche, but Cologne Blanche did not make this list. However, En Noir did make the list. It did make the cut. And uh, En Noir is a masterpiece, even though it's watered down. I, I do wish it had more bite and caramelized depth, like the, like it's, poison green predecessor had, especially the Eau de Cologne version, which is gone since many years now. So we have only the Eau de Parfum left. I love it to bits, even though it's no longer that intense as it used to be. Alas, it is what it is. Listen, I'll take this in any way, shape or form. You know, you know what I mean? Beggars can't be choosers. As long as they still make it, I'm happy because uh, it, it is a masterpiece. So this thing has the immortel, you know, the famous curry, and on some skins it does smell a little bit curry-esque, so it goes into that gourmand territory, not on my skin. I get the immortel, the curry, but I also get a lot of the anise, a lot of the licorice, a lot of the lavender, a lot of the burnt woods, uh, the, the cedar, and that touch of vanilla, and um, even an incense accord in here, especially in the dry down, that are just majestic, right? It goes through a phase where it does give me kind of a vibe of a McDonald's McGriddle burger, you know what I mean? <laughs> but then it kind of drifts out of that pretty soon and goes into the burnt woods. And it's just a masterpiece. So this is a beautiful fragrance and it definitely made me very happy to see that it being reintroduced into the market. Again in production, uh, albeit, you know, with the liquid color change and reformulation, but uh, it's still really, really, really one of my favorites from the Collection Privé range. Truth be told, the Dior Collection Privé still remains to this day, for me, limited to the first three Eau de Colognes that were released back in the early 2000s. So originally they had um, Colonne Blanche, Eau Noire, and Bois d'Argent. Those were the original three released in Eau de Cologne form, and still to this day, even though they don't have the Eau de Cologne now, they have the Eau de Parfum. Those three are my favorite Collection Privé Dior perfumes. Like, those are the three you need. Technically, now with the reformulations, the only two you need are Bois d'Argent and Eau Noire. Cologne Blanche, whatever. But Eau Noire and Bois d'Argent, those are the two. If you really want to Collection Privé Dior fragrance, those are the two. And this one being special for 2023 because it was reintroduced and highlighted again. And I was just so happy to see it advertised again, you know, after so many years of it being kind of almost gone. And it was discontinued for a certain period of time during the Demachie uh, 
dictatorship, as I want to call it, <laughs> allegedly. But anyway, so there's that. Um, another fragrance that uh, I used a lot this year, and I used it whenever I needed a fresh pick-me-up sobering effect. Whenever I would tend to go, you know, depressed and kind of feeling really low and down and, oh, life is so limited. Oh, woe is me, woe is me. In other words, whenever I was feeling the Maora vibes, I would pick myself up from those vibes with this little beauty here. And you might have recognized the pouch. It's one of those classic Hermes pouches that come with the perfume. And uh, this is the first release of the perfume, and I've refilled it a thousand times already. But uh, it came with a little cloth, microfiber cloth inside to polish this refillable bottle. And I've had this since 2010, so it's a little bit knocked up, danged up a little bit, but doesn't matter. I still love it to bits. Uh, it is the Voyage d'Hermes. Look at all those scratches. This bottle is 13 years old. Okay? And I love it so much. This little concoction here travels with me all the time, and it has this... You flip it around like that, and then it stays up there. It has a little sprayer nozzle. And then you just unscrew the the top off and then you refill the bottle once it's empty. This is a 35 mil eau de toilette bottle. I adore. And this is the original release. So later they released a thicker one, like you could buy different sizes. They released the Parfum concentration of this one as well. And it's kind of in a black bottle. But Originally, back in 2010, 2009, 2010, they released Voyage d'Hermes only like this in the 35 mil refillable, turnable bottle. And then you could also purchase the flasks, you know, the glass flasks to refill this little bottle. And that's what I did. And uh, yeah, I never purchased the other concentrations. I stuck with the Eau de Toilette. And this year I've been using this one secretly. This has been my little secret kind of warrior that I didn't want to share with anyone this whole year. <laughs> now I'm at, now it's the end of the year and I can share it with you. This little fella has been helping me out a lot uh, to get through a lot of emotional drama uh, this year. And um, special little perfume, beautiful bottle design, heavy metal, not the, not the song genre, but, uh, so this is kind of like a gin tonic, you know what I mean? Uh, it, <laughs> juniper berries, basically, is what we're talking about here. Juniper, juniper, juniper. Beautiful, clean, crisp juniper vibes in this perfume. It is magical, airy, breezy, clean. It's like being at the top of a mountain in the middle of summer with a light breeze going your way. It's kind of cool but warm at the same time. It just allows you to focus and meditate. It's a beautiful, strengthening and invigorating perfume. And it comes in this gorgeous little pouch. And like I said, it has, on one side, it has this little, it's attached to the inside, right? And so it's kind of to polish your bottle. I mean, Hermes, I mean, they think of everything. You know what I mean? They really, really, I don't know if they still do it this well, if these pouches are still so beautifully done like they were back then, but when, when this perfume was first released. But like I said, the quality is so good that I never needed to repurchase this. I bought it once and I keep using it. And you flip it and you put it in its little pouch. I mean, you can turn it this way around, actually. So that little juniper moment, it's a very light, breezy, boozy juniper fragrance that is... Voyage d'Hermes, the journey. Isn't that funny? The Hermes journey. Literally, voyage means journey in French. So this is the journey perfume that I've been wearing. Coincidentally, not just because we're on a journey towards a Birkin, but we're also on a life journey as well. The next perfume uh, has been 
very much utilized by me this year uh, in its auto parfum concentration. So this is number nine. <clears throat> I, since many years, kind of stopped using it and now I've rediscovered it. I'm loving the current formula of the auto parfum. Another Chanel, and that would be Bel Respiro. This thing is magical. I have rediscovered it this year. I have my Eau de Toilette, which I adore. Again, same issue like with Beige. Uh, the 2016 first edition of Dito Parfum I did not like. Now, now Olivier has tweaked it. Now Bel Respiro has reached a level of sublime perfection. It is superior. I don't know what else to tell you. Bel Respiro is crafted. It's majestic. Majestic. It is clean, crisp, green, fresh cut grass with the most expensive essential oils sprinkled into that grass. It makes you feel... Oh. Ooh, goosebumps. I mean, this thing is just... It's there. <laughs> and for some reason, it framed my year so magically. And I've used up actually an entire bottle. <laughs> and I'm kind of about to purchase another one. 2023 was also Bel Respiro for me. And this perfume gave me hope. Uh, this perfume made me feel... In a humble way... It made me feel grounded. I felt the ground underneath my feet. I, I didn't feel like I was floating around like without a purpose. This one really anchored me. It, it made me feel grounded and it helped me focus. And I'm very, very grateful to Bel Respiro. It, it's like one of my best friends. Bel Respiro is always there when I need to lean on somebody because I feel like I'm wobbly and I'm about to kind of fall. I get my little buddy here and I lean on it and I'm like, oh, okay, good, good. We're going to get through this. <laughs> Bel Respiro, I have so much respect, so much respect for this perfume. So much respect. So, and it's been a rediscovery and such a joy to see that the reformulate, the slight tweak in the formula made the current Eau de Parfum just so perfect for me. You know, it, it, it very structured and balanced in a good way. It just made me feel like I belong and like I'm, I'm in the right spot, the right mental space. Just bel respiro, literally the word in Italian means, you know, a, a breath of fresh air. Bel respiro. Bel from bello or bella, which means beautiful. Respiro means breath. So like a beautiful breath, which is kind of like, literally translated beautiful breath but it also means a a breath of fresh air and we've come to the end of our journey number 10 the 10th fragrance believe it or not is the only perfume the only perfume uh the only sorry it's the only new release this year that i purchased this is how picky I have become with fragrances. Selective. I don't do the, let me review 50,000 new niches and this and that every day, every week. I, I can't. I need to dedicate my soul to a perfume to get to know a perfume like I get to know a friend. You can't have many friends in life. Hate to break it to you. <laughs> it's also like a menu in a restaurant. If there's 50,000 things on the menu in the restaurant, you know that restaurant is shady. Something is wrong. You go to a restaurant where they have the nice selected 10 pieces. Now we're talking. Same applies to perfumes for me personally. I cannot do too many perfumes. I need my time to get to know a perfume and, and to live with it, to let it talk to me and feel it and go deeper into it, right? So in 2023... From all of the new releases that have come from all of the perfume houses, I have not purchased any except for one. And I'm wearing that perfume today, right now, and it is giving me, 
I am so intoxicated <laughs> with it in the best of way. It is just, it hits the spot for this end of the year like nothing else. And it really merits, even though it was released late August, mid-September. So it was released late in the game, you know, in 2023. It was not released like at the beginning of the year. So I had a chance to love this perfume for an entire year. No, but when I heard that they were going to release this perfume, which is based on Iris, which I adore, I was shocked. And I was like, oh my God, this, this, this is going to be special. This is really going to be special. And it took me months to hunt it down. And I just hunted it down a short while ago. And I am so in love with this that I, I don't know what to tell you. It, it is, it's the only new release that I purchased this year. This is how selective I am. But at the same time, unfortunately, it's a limited edition. So I had to kind of try to fight to get one backup bottle because it's kind of sold out everywhere. So I managed to buy one to use and one to back up. Are you ready for this? Oh my gosh, this is uh, just amazing. Oh, here goes. It is the Chalimar Milesim Diris. So it's the Iris Milesim by Guerlain and the Eau de Parfum concentration. They only came out with a 50 mil. And this is Chalimar. And I have here also the Extrait that I adore. I adore the Extrait of Chalimar. You know what I noticed? Guerlain is kind of very honest when it comes to how they depict their perfumes on their website. Because usually, you know, when you talk to sales associates, they're going to tell you, well, you know, the concentrations define the intensity of the perfume. Blah, blah, blah. That is so not true. You know, they're going to tell you Eau de Cologne is weaker than Eau de Toilette. Eau de Toilette is weaker than Eau de Parfum. Eau de Parfum is weaker than the Extrait in terms of intensity. So not true. But what I really like about Guerlain is that on their website, their Extrait of Chalimar is rated, they have like these little dots that rate how intense the perfume is, right? The Extrait does not have four dots. It has three. The Eau de Parfum has four dots. So I love how honest they are about the fact that, well, yeah, they're extrait, and which is what I always try to explain to people, just because you have an Eau de Cologne concentration doesn't mean that the Eau de Cologne is going to be lighter than the Eau de Toilette of the same perfume. So not true. So not true. And I love that Guerlain really went there and they said, no, our extrait is a lighter delicate formula. It is divine, but it is not the most intense, even though it is the most expensive and blah, blah, blah. Love that honesty from them. The uh, Milesim Diris Chalimar is just, and we're going to spray it now because I already have it on and I'm just intoxicated in, oh my gosh. Let's do three. Yeah, this, I, no words. Um, this is the modern Shalimar for me. Uh, it, it's boozy, burnt vanilla woods with that iris. But it's an iris that is drenched in vanilla. It's almost cloying. It's like a fava bean <laughs> in a way. It's almost like a like a tonka bean vibe going on there, but it's not because it's iris and it's the Guerlinade vanilla composition here. It's just on another level. Oh. That iris, it's almost giving me Dior Homme from the early, the original, from the early 2000s like from 2004, right? Which is also an iris, iris composition. It's giving me Dior Homme, but like, I don't know, 200 times the quality. Because when you inhale this, you go, it's not just that quality of Dior Homme, l'original or the toilette, but it is, 50,000 other layers in there. 
And the depth of it, the darkness in this one, the burnt woods, the the ashiness, you know, the iris can be very dry. It's almost like uh, smoke after after the wood has been burnt and, and there's that kind of glow from within the burnt wood still. And there's that smoke emanating. And when you inhale it, your throat kind of like uh, gets dry. You know, that's what you get in here. It's a burning fragrance, but it's not a fresh fire. This is the end of something. Typical for Guerlain, there's always that notion of finite existence, acknowledging how limited we are. There's a poetry in Guerlain perfumes that really always touches base, especially when they kind of revisit their old school masterpieces like Shalimar. So it's not a fire that is just burning now. No, this fire has been turned off. But there's that glow, the amber from within that log of vanilla that is, it's pulsating from within. But we know that something is coming to an end. It was also released towards the end of the year, right? So it's kind of a contemplation on the ending of something. But it's hopeful because the quality is so good that you're thinking, oh, wow, okay, this is, I'm looking forward. If this is what we have today, then I'm looking forward to tomorrow because it can only get better from here on out. And it, there's a boozy quality to this. It just a uh, masterpiece. I'm so sad that their Milazim formulations, you know, they're limited. You know, every year they make a different Milazim of Shalimar and when it's sold out, it's sold out. Uh, and then the next year they're going to do another one. But... The fact that they this year dedicated their Milesim of Shalimar to Iris or Iris Pallida is genius, you know, really, really, really genius. Uh, and it just, it's right down my alley or right up my alley. And so something is ending and something begins. This year is over. My selection has been made this video is also over <laughs> i hope you've enjoyed it let me know which perfumes were your best friends in 2023 which ones you love the most which ones helped you out the most uh and you know thumb up this video if you're enjoying it subscribe um jesus in the chat says i'd love a shalimar milazim leather version well this is something this is leathery you know how iris and Oris root have a leather quality to them, like suede, you know, like a suede quality. Smoky and leathery. Uh, it's mind-blowing, mind-blowing. Anyway, I want to say hi to Teresa McGuire, also in the chats, Despina, Audrey, T-Pal, Miss Jelly, Jack's Bag Attack, Finley, D. Everybody who has uh, who's been in the chats and who's been with me through this year, you guys are the best. You know who you are. And a little shout out to my family <laughs> here in this end of year video. Why not? It is the last selection of the year after all. Beautiful steps as well. Despina, Chizas, Aish, everybody. Love you loads. Subscribe if you're enjoying my content and want to... You know, let's see the family grow here. Until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Bye.